You're taking amlodipine, and the swelling in your feet and ankles keeps getting worse. For many older adults, this swelling feels confusing. Is it too much sodium? Is it water retention? Is something wrong with the kidneys? Or is the medication itself the real cause? Today, we break down the real mechanism behind amlodipine swelling, explained in a clear, simple way, so you finally understand what's happening inside your body. Welcome to MedDose Explained. Here, we take complex medical topics and make them easy to understand for older adults and their families. If you're over 60 and you want evidence-based explanations about medications, you're in the right place. This video is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always talk to your doctor before making changes to your medication, your dose, or your routine. And lodipine causes swelling for a very specific reason, and it begins in the smallest blood vessels in your legs. Amlodipine is a dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. Its main action is to relax and widen small arteries, especially the tiny vessels that deliver blood into your capillaries. These vessels are called precapillary arterioles. When these arterioles open wider, more blood flows into your capillary beds. That helps lower your blood pressure, but it also raises the pressure inside the capillaries themselves. And when pressure inside a capillary rises, fluid is pushed out of the vessel and into the surrounding tissue. This is the first major reason swelling happens. As more fluid leaks out, you begin to notice puffiness around the ankles, tightness or heaviness in the legs, swelling that becomes worse by evening. Even if your heart, kidneys, and liver are completely healthy, this pressure change alone is enough to cause swelling. Inside your body, a balance normally exists between two forces, hydrostatic pressure, pushing fluid out, oncotic pressure, pulling fluid back in. Amlodipine increases the push-out pressure without increasing the pull-back force. So more fluid leaves the capillaries than your body can reabsorb, and gravity makes this even more noticeable. Your ankles are far from the heart, and blood tends to pool downward, so when hydrostatic pressure rises, the ankles swell first. As we age, this effect becomes stronger. Veins lose elasticity, lymph flow slows, and capillaries become more fragile. This is why a 65-year-old often experiences more swelling than a 30-year-old, even at the same dose of amlodipine. Now, let's look at the second major reason amlodipine causes swelling. This one involves your kidneys, your hormones, and a powerful system called RAAS, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. When amlodipine widens your arteries, your blood pressure drops slightly. Your body senses this drop and activates RAAS as a natural protective response. RAAS tells your kidneys, hold on to more sodium and hold on to more water. More sodium means more water. More water means more volume inside your blood vessels. And when you have more fluid volume, pressure inside your capillaries increases again. This pushes even more fluid out into your ankles and feet. A key hormone in this process is aldosterone. Aldosterone tells your kidneys to keep sodium and excrete potassium. When aldosterone stays high, you retain extra fluid, especially if you're older and your kidneys respond more strongly to hormonal signals. There's another system at work here too, the sympathetic nervous system. When blood pressure drops, your sympathetic system activates to stabilize things. It increases your heart rate, tightens certain blood vessels, and tells your kidneys to reabsorb even more sodium. So now, two forces are working together. Amlodipine widens arteries. Your body holds sodium and water to push pressure back up. This combination creates a double effect. More blood entering capillaries, 
plus more fluid volume in the bloodstream. And the result is clear, more swelling, especially in the lower legs. Older adults feel this more strongly because baroreceptors decline with age, vascular elasticity is reduced, kidney filtration slows down, and the body becomes more sensitive to sodium. So the same 5 mg or 10 mg dose can cause noticeably more swelling in someone over 60 than in someone in their 30s. Now, let's look at the third piece of the puzzle. This one explains why swelling usually starts mild in the morning and gets much worse by the end of the day. It's all about your lymphatic system, the drainage network that removes extra fluid from your tissues. Under normal conditions, your lymph vessels quietly collect extra fluid and move it back into your bloodstream. You never notice it because the system works automatically, all day long. But when you're taking amlodipine, more fluid leaks out of your capillaries than usual. Not just once, but continuously, hour after hour. At first, your lymph system can keep up, but over time, it becomes overwhelmed like a sponge that's absorbing water faster than it can drain. When that happens, fluid begins to collect in the soft tissues of your legs and ankles. And here's the key point. Your lymph system works best when you're moving, walking, flexing your calf muscles. All of that helps push fluid upward back toward your heart. But when you sit for long periods or stand still, Lymph flow slows down, fluid buildup increases, and swelling becomes more visible. That's why many older adults say, my swelling always gets worse at night. It's not just in your head, it's physiology. Gravity pulls fluid downward, your lymph system tires out, and by evening, there's more fluid in your ankles than your body can clear. As we age, this effect becomes stronger. Lymph vessels pump more slowly, muscle tone decreases, and the valves inside leg veins don't push fluid upward as effectively as they once did. All of this makes amlodipine-related swelling much more noticeable in seniors, especially after a long day of sitting or standing. Now, let's answer a question many people have. If amlodipine causes swelling, why do so many doctors prescribe it together with Losartan? The reason is simple and very important. Losartan helps fix the exact mechanism that amlodipine disrupts. Amlodipine widens precapillary arterioles, the vessels leading into your capillaries. This increases pressure inside the capillary and pushes fluid out. But Losartan works on the other side the postcapillary venules. Losartan relaxes these venules, reducing the pressure inside the capillary bed. This lowers the push-out force and helps fluid move back into circulation. In simple terms, amlodipine opens the front door, Losartan opens the back door, so pressure doesn't build up. There's more. Losartan blocks angiotensin II, which reduces aldosterone, and that means less sodium retention and less water retention. So while amlodipine slightly triggers RAAS, Losartan shuts it down. This combination lowers blood pressure effectively, reduces swelling, and balances the vascular system. Multiple clinical studies show the same pattern. Amlodipine alone, more swelling. Amlodipine plus Losartan, significantly less swelling. This is why many doctors choose this combination for older adults, especially those sensitive to swelling or those who can't tolerate higher doses of amlodipine alone. The two medications complement each other. One controls blood pressure through arterial relaxation, and the other stabilizes capillary pressure and reduces fluid retention. Not everyone who takes enlodipine will experience swelling, but some people are much more likely to notice it, even at low doses. Here are the groups at higher risk. First, 
Adults over 60. As we age, our veins lose elasticity, our lymphatic system slows down, and capillaries become more fragile. This makes any extra fluid build up more easily in the ankles. Second, women. Hormonal differences can affect vascular permeability and how easily fluid leaks into tissues. Third, people who live in hot climates. Heat causes natural vasodilation, and when you add amlodipine on top of that, swelling becomes more noticeable. Fourth, anyone with a high salt diet. Salt pulls water into the bloodstream, increasing overall fluid volume and raising capillary pressure. This makes the swelling worse. Fifth, people who sit or stand for long hours during the day. Lack of movement slows lymphatic drainage and fluid settles in the legs. Sixth, people taking medications that cause sodium retention. This includes NSAIDs, corticosteroids, and certain hormonal therapies. And finally, people on higher doses, especially 10 milligrams of amlodipine. The swelling effect is dose dependent. The higher the dose, the higher the chance of edema. These factors don't mean something is wrong with your heart or with your kidneys. They simply make your body more sensitive to the way amlodipine works. Most swelling from amlodipine is uncomfortable, but not dangerous. However, there are times when swelling can signal something more serious, and these situations require medical attention. Call your doctor if you notice rapid swelling that appears suddenly or worsens over just a few hours. Call your doctor if swelling is only on one leg, especially if it's warm, red, or painful to the touch. That can be a sign of a blood clot. Call your doctor if you experience shortness of breath, chest pressure, or difficulty lying flat. These can be signs of fluid building up in the lungs or around the heart. Call your doctor if you have sudden weight gain, one, two, or three pounds overnight, because that may indicate fluid retention. And call your doctor if you feel dizziness, fainting, or dehydration, especially when standing up. Finally, if swelling keeps increasing week after week, even with lifestyle changes, your dose or medication combination may simply need to be adjusted. These signs don't always mean something dangerous, but they do mean you should be evaluated sooner rather than later. Now, let's talk about what you can do today to manage amlodipine swelling more comfortably. First, reduce high salt foods. Salt pulls water into your bloodstream and increases the pressure inside your capillaries. Even small reductions can make a real difference. Second, try to elevate your legs for 10 to 15 minutes when you're resting. This helps fluid move upward and reduces ankle swelling. Third, avoid NSAIDs like ibuprofen or naproxen unless your doctor approves. These medications cause sodium retention and can make swelling worse. Fourth, if you sit for long periods, take short walking breaks. Just one or two minutes of movement helps your lymphatic system drain fluid more effectively. Fifth, talk to your doctor about your medication dose. Some older adults do much better on 5 mg instead of 10. Others improve by pairing amlodipine with losartan. And finally, track your blood pressure and your swelling pattern. Write down your morning and evening readings and note symptoms like dizziness, tightness, or unusual fatigue. These small details give your doctor important clues about how well the medication is working for you. If swelling becomes rapidly worse, if breathing becomes difficult, or if you gain several pounds overnight, call your doctor promptly. Early adjustments often prevent bigger problems later. If you found this explanation helpful, 
Feel free to subscribe so you don't miss future videos about medication safety for older adults. And if you want to learn more about timing, side effects, and combinations like amlodipine with losartan, you'll find a playlist on your screen with the next videos to watch. Thank you for watching, and take care.